Welcome to another edition of The Road To. We're going to talk about Northern Virginia politics today. I'm Patty Morrissey. I'm from Loudoun County, and uh, I'm your host today. And first, we start off with a little intro of our regular panelist, Mike Lane. Why don't you start off? Thank you, Patty, for having me back. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, our regular viewers may remember, I don't know, that uh, I started off in Arlington County. I was sentenced to a term of office on the county board there uh, back in the 90s. And after that, I got involved in party politics, was a uh, uh, congressional district chairman in the 8th district. And now I try and get people elected to public office on the Republican side. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Phyllis Randall, my friend from uh, out my way. Hi, Patty. Thanks for having me back. I'm Phyllis Randall. I am an 18-year resident of Loudoun County community activist in the county, especially on issues of uh, education. I'm also the current chair of Virginia's Fair Housing Board, and I want to take a moment to wish happy birthday to President Obama today. It's his oh, yeah. 51st birthday today. Thank you. Yeah, good, good, uh, good thought. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was focused on my birthday the other day. <laughs> happy birthday. And I'm actually a little <laughs> tiny bit older than him. Um, and we also have, uh, as one of our guest panelists, Leslie Byrne, who it's a long, long, long resume, so I'll let you highlight the... Talk about birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, I think uh, a lot of folks remember me as uh, the first woman elected to Congress from Virginia in 1992. Before that, I was in the House of Delegates for four terms. Uh, I went on to become the nation's consumer advocate in the Clinton administration in the White House. Uh, and I went back to the Virginia Senate uh, after that and am starting a new political action committee, which I hope we'll talk about we a little bit. We'll definitely talk about it, yep. Um, and we also have a, a first time for this show uh, guest, Cesar de Ag Aguila. Awesome, uh, yes. Of the Eagle. Yeah. Cesar of the Eagle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cesar de Aguila. I'm actually the chairman of the Fairfax County Democratic Committee. Uh, I've been involved in politics uh, probably since my mom got us, you know, aware of some of the issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, my focus is to uh, promote the democratic values and get folks elected that support those values. Okay, it's good to have you for the first Glad time. Glad to be here. We are going to start off talking about um, whether or not there are going to be some kind of political ramifications in terms of gun laws of the Aurora, um, I would say, massacre. The media is calling it a massacre. Um, and we've you know, had a, heard a lot in the media about, is this just another crazy person? You know, he could have gotten away with this in some other fashion versus is there something we should be doing, some common sense laws that are not on the books right now? Um, why don't we start off with Phyllis? You know, it's interesting because that morning my husband woke me up because I'm from Denver, Colorado, and that shooting is, was just down the street from me. And I actually had a family member who was at the theater that night. So that really hit very close to home to me. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why we can't even have the conversation about um, um, gun laws. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people who hunt and people who own guns for sport. I don't know one hunter who needs to use a semi-automatic weapon. Um, I know that the only bill that's come up so far is a bill to, to uh, stop the purchase of uh, how many magazine clips you can buy online. And even that's being fought. I, you know, when you talk about somebody who's looking to buy a magazine clip that shoots 100 bullets, that person is not probably talking about hunting or shooting for sport. I, obviously, am a supporter of the Second Amendment, but we have to realize, and I think common sense would tell us, that when our founding fathers wrote the Constitution, they were talking about musket guns that you had to load and shoot and load and shoot and load and shoot. They had no idea that one day there would be semi-automatic weapons, there would be um, bullet, uh, bulletproof piercing bullets that, that were designed to kill people. They had no idea what was going to be out there at that time. Mm -hmm. And I, I also say that in my other life, I'm a mental health therapist, and I can tell you that there is almost uh, no checking on people who have mental health illnesses as far as them getting weapons. I have clients who so. I know um, have, um, have access to guns, who have serious mental illness problems. We had the same conversation after the Virginia Tech shooting and nothing happened, mm -hmm. and now we have it again. So if we assume that the person, it's, it's the, the issue of who has the gun and not the guns themselves, 
then can we at least agree that we need to do something to stop people who have mental health issues from getting guns? Can we at least go that far? Yeah. Well, Mike, I mean, I, I've heard the other argument that, well, people like to take those, those you know, whatever you call them, those clips, those large clips, out to do, to do target practice. But, I mean, what are they practicing for? Well, let me correct one thing that, or just disagree with Phyllis. Um, actually, semi-automatic rifles are used in hunting, um, particularly deer, that, that kind of thing, um, bear, et cetera. So it's not a... Uh, it, There's it's, not it's much not of a deer sure left. I don't know. I mean, I don't, no, I mean, they, I, what they, I said is I don't know hunters who have, and I don't, and I've okay. talked a lot of I, Do they, you? Yes, I do. Okay, who, who uh, use semi-automatic weapons to kill their prey? Uh, to hunt their prey, yes. To hunt their prey, yes. Wow. Um, you know, I, I don't often find myself in agreement with the president, but uh, the day after this tragedy happened, um, he sent his press secretary to the microphone uh, in the briefing room to say that uh, the president didn't see any need for any new policy initiatives to come out of this. Uh, I agree with the president on that. This is not, you know, it, it's not a gun issue. I think Phyllis knocked it out of the park when she said this is a mental health issue. And I think we need to look at it as a mental health issue, and I think we, we need to have a big conversation about mental health, how we approach it here in the United States. And I'm not at all opposed to coming up with a, a program uh, to make sure that uh, people who have, uh, you know, people who don't have the ability to make uh, proper judgments uh, about exercising their constitutional rights uh, in that manner shouldn't, shouldn't have access to firearms. I'm, I'm perfectly good having that conversation, I think, I think we need to do it, it's overdue. The question would be, is the NRA pu yeah, pu perfectly say. comfortable having that conversation? Leslie, what do you think? Yeah, I think, that I, I, I mean, I can't speak for the NRA, I don't work for them, I don't consult for them, et cetera, but I think the NRA uh, would, be, uh, would, would be very comfortable in looking at the, I mean, we already have uh, laws now that prevent people in certain uh, categories who have mental health uh, issues uh, from being able to purchase uh, firearms in the same manner as everybody else. In fact, they can't purchase them at all. So now it's a matter of defining uh, what that category well, actually, is, we, what that class is. The category you guys, let's, let, let, I'm sorry. Let's, let's I'm sorry. jump in. But Inge, you were on the Hill when the Brady Bill was still... The Brady Bill passed, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's not new law. It was old law that we banned assault weapons semi-automatic assault weapons, and that law uh, was since rescinded. But the fact remains is that if you talk to any hunter, and I target shoot, I have a gun, if you shoot a semi-automatic at a deer, there's not much meat left. Quite honestly, quite honestly now, there's just no real reason for semi-automatic uh, hunting guns. And for target practice, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out you, you can shoot a target sh spewing out bullets at 100 clip. And the thing that disappoints me the most is the lack of uh, spine on the part of Democrats to tackle this issue. They were cowed by the NRA and its minions, and we lost a, go a good number of people in the Congress because of that Brady bill vote right? in 94. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to repeat it. And I uh, understand and the, it, yeah, and the but Brady it doesn't make was, it right. The Brady bill did it sort of analogous to this, how you control who gets guns. I mean, that was core to the Brady bill was to give that waiting period right. for law enforcement right. to figure out who exactly is. Exactly. So that was central. Exactly. And that was seen as a step that would make sense to law enforcement. But Cesar, what do you see from a policy perspective? Where do you see this going? I, I think it's disingenuous to say that um, having someone wait, either for a check, a background, or some sort of validation, uh, is somehow threatening everyone's rights. I, I, I think if you poll and ask most Democrats, uh, we support the Second Amendment wholeheartedly. That's not the issue. The issue is, let's even have the discussion, what is a gun by definition? How do you want to define that? And then start crafting policy on who gets rights to purchase guns if they've got prior criminal history and so forth. So I, How I, much of an arsenal does one individual well, actually and, and again, need? Again, <laughs> if you want an arsenal, have an arsenal. Absolutely. But there's a, there's a mindset with some people that I think speaks to why we went to Iraq 
why we seem to want to get involved in these conflicts. There's just this behavior, I think, that we need to address. And I think it does stem from the mental health side. Like, what are people really trying to address? Exactly. What, what is it that, why do I need a thousand rounds to go hunting? Exactly. I mean, I just assume go out there with a knife. Real, real guys, that's what we do, right? <laughs> we're out there, we're, we're cut down. Of the eagle. There you go. Says our of the doing. eagle. Can I, can I say one more thing really quickly? Sure. I have heard Congressman sure. King and a few other people make the incredibly ridiculous Who? statement that Who if, you Congressman King from New York, okay. that if, if, if other people in the, in the theater had have had guns that night, it might have stopped so many deaths. And I'll, can you imagine for a second, it's a dark theater, yeah. people are running, and somebody's trying to figure out who's shooting and they pull out their gun and Wild start West. shooting at the same time. It is the most ridiculous statement I think I've ever heard that more guns in the dark theater at that, at that moment of, of havoc and panic yeah. would have actually saved lives. It's well, just Well, we could probably ridiculous. debate that for a long time because there are certain people that would be trained to do concealed carry might think that they could be well, the hero, but, right? But I don't so think he that, was talking that could about go on and on. Talking about that. Not to mention the, the shooter actually had a bulletproof vest on his own self. So. Yeah, right, right. Well, we're going to transition a little bit to um, another issue that's been in the news in the last couple of weeks, or um, uh, Mitt Romney's trip to, uh, to Great Britain and then to Israel and then to Poland. And there seemed to be a real... Um, agenda of you know showing strong leadership and I'm gonna let Mike do the the first comment on this because he's a little outnumbered but um, the, the press really and the British press really pounced on him for some of his comments you know it used to be that the truth was an absolute defense I guess no longer uh, we've seen that the Brits were not ready for the Olympics um, it was an impolitic thing to say probably the wrong thing to say at the wrong time in the wrong place uh, but the rest of the trip, I thought, went fantastic. The uh, visit to Israel was wow. knocking it out of the park. Wow. Uh, the uh, trip to Poland knocked it even further out of the park. Uh, it was, Palestinians would disagree it was, with you with the Israel Well, one. you know what? That's right. The Palestinians would. But it's time we start looking at this. You know, we, our ally there is not the Palestinians. Our ally is Israel. They are the ones who are dedicated and committed to a democracy. They are the ones who are dedicated and committed to peace. The Palestinians, Hamas, who runs the place, they're dedicated and committed to terrorism. Uh, when you look at what the Israelis have achieved compared to what the terrorists have achieved, uh, it's night and day, and I don't think that there's... Mike, are you equating all Palestinians with terrorists? No, I, is I'm, that what you're saying? No, I'm equating the, uh, the, the Palestinian uh, area run by Hamas with terrorists, yes. Do you Our think alliance is with human rights. It's not with one particular country. And mm -hmm. to deny people human rights on any basis... I'm not denying anybody human well, rights. Well, when you build a wall and you do these things, you're talking about the denial of rights to one group over another group. And it was in politic, to say the least, of Mitt Romney to talk about culture being the success point mm -hmm. for the economy in Israel. You cannot deny people, if you've ever been to Israel, you will understand that when you go and you see that the people can't even get to their jobs on the Palestinian side without approval of the Israelis, it's not culture. It is not culture, Mike, and that is, that is something it, it, it that is anybody listening. who understands the area knows, that it is not culture when you are controlled by the majority group. Well, I, I, Wait, I can, beg can, to differ can, with can you. Can I just roll look, back a little, can I just, can they, I just roll back a little bit? They have their own areas, and when you look at the difference in what the, uh, the Israelis have been able to achieve within their country, and what the Palestinians have not been able to achieve he also with, tied it with to, significant aid. You know, if we, you read his whole statement, Mike, you also see that he said it's kind of like the Mexicans and the Americans. Do you agree with that, that the Mexican culture prohibits them from being successful? I mean, this fella goes overseas. It's never a good thing when the headline says, Mitt the twit. Well, it's never a good thing. Wait, no, 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 that's the press, Leslie. No, no, it wasn't just the press, Mike. Then he goes he, to he, Israel and talks about culture in a way that not only defames Palestinians, but defames Mexicans. Oh. I mean, this is not a, a, a triumph of negotiation and diplomacy. You, so this is you a symptom. And, and this is a, you, you, you and I will forever disagree us. on this, but the fact <laughs> is, 
It's it's done. It's gone. But it's Phil, over. We're back to the not, economy. It's not done. It's not done. It's not done. Phil, it's not done. It is the economy. Take this up, but also in the context. He was at a fundraiser in a foreign country. I might be missing something here. Well, and the thing is, it's for it, his pres U.S. presidential campaign in Israel raising money. I don't get it. Well, but there's three. Different, there's a couple of different <laughs> things. If we let's just step back to the beginning of the trip in London. The, the, the comment about the Olympics was was unwise to make. But he made some much bigger prob had some much bigger problems in London. Forgetting the name of Ed, Ed Miebane, the head of the Labour Party um, in in London was just a, a ridiculous gaffe. The fact that he actually said that he met with the Secret Service of London that's never ever talked about. I mean, he did some things that were not just apolitical, they were unwise. So now he goes to Israel. You can support our allies in Israel without, without insulting the Palestinians. Quite frankly, he, he didn't need to throw fire on, on that you know, decades old problem and then get in the plane and fly away. They have enough issues to deal with already. You can actually, well, you can actually be supportive of our allies. Even, even, even the Israelis have never said that the the issue with Palestine was culture. He's went farther than they have went. And now we go to Poland. And then what happens in Poland? His his press secretary actually says this is a holy wall, and then curses the press and tells them to shove it. This was not a good trip. Now, not only was he not somebody who could be a good statesman, he could not even be a good tourist. Okay. He that, was just me, you know, a nightmare. Let's give Cesar, let's I, I, give Cesar I, I, some time I've here. Been, Go uh, ahead, Cesar. I've been my tongue Fighting here. his um, tongue. And <laughs> all due respect, I think it's symptomatic, I think, with a certain mindset. Remember, we, we, we miss George W., because he was a great guy, but people don't know this. Prior to him being elected president, he had not traveled outside the continental United States. Think about that for a second. What is his sensitivity to the other world cultures, customs? There's certain things you do when you have a very diverse group of people that you're around. You learn to be just a little bit sensitive. You don't shoot off. You don't speak out. You don't just say. You tend to filter. And I think Mr. Governor Romney has that issue. He has the problem that he is not sensitive. Well, he's been he traveled, filters, he's traveled he enough. Filters, but, but my point is he does not understand the sensitivity factor. He filters a lot of things, but he doesn't get that mm -hmm. component. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big issue. Let, let me give you two political data points, okay, because we're in a campaign, so it really does come down to politics. Yeah. Um, Mitt Romney is going to get the highest percentage of the Jewish vote of any Republican uh, candidate uh, in recent memory. What, about 18 um, percent? No, he's probably going to get about 40, 42 percent oh, of I the don't Jewish think vote. So. I'm going to write that down. I'll take that so. bet. <laughs> a 10,000 um, vote. Yeah. 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 Wow, <laughs> Mike, four is pretty good. Yeah. It's <laughs> August, and you've already got um, <laughs> The second thing <laughs> is, uh, you know, there's a huge Polish population in Michigan, in Ohio, and Pennsylvania. There's also a huge Arab population in Michigan. very close <laughs> note <laughs> of, uh, of what happened uh, there, and, and I think that uh, uh, it's going to help him in those three states. Let me give you some data now. points. After the trip, before the trip, Mitt Romney was up in Florida, which has the which has a very high concentration of Jewish voters by four points. After the trip, he was down in Florida by six points. He had a ten point swing after he went to um, Israeli. I think maybe, just possibly, the people in um, who, who who are Jewish actually know that what you don't do. What you don't want to do is is further, is is further okay. inflame the situation and further inflame you, people. You want some of the and then Phyllis? once again get you want in the plane and go on that. No, I'm not a hey, betting woman. Hey, who knows why you went woman. to Poland? And besides, to get, why did you go to Poland? To, to, to oh, sure. let's go, Look, let's go to you know, endorse. Well, why did he go to Poland, Mike? You should know this. Why did he go to Poland? Why is Walesa mad at the president? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the whole Polish people are mad at the president because he yanked the rug out from underneath them on the missile defense. The whole and, Polish uh, people? You know, you know, you're talking in very big generalities <laughs> yeah, today, yeah, yeah, really yeah. The majority of, That's why the majority he went to of Poland, Poles though. in Poland are angry with the president because he yanked the rug out from underneath our staunchest ally in that area. Are you assuming that Michigan's going to go to... Mitt Romney? I didn't say that. Okay, I just, said just, that the fact to, that there is a significantly that because aware you do, you do Polish know, you do, you do know that, that, that. Can I ask our former former congresswoman though about the the national security piece of that? Because 
this goes back to, to Cold War days where now, now Poland's basically demanding our protection against Russia. And so that's what he's mad about. That's why he actually is endorsing Mitt Romney because he's pissed about that one issue. Excuse my language. He's angry about that one issue. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's a funny, dyna- not funny, but I think it's just a strange dynamic that our candidate goes right for that to try to exploit that when the overall issue, besides being the cost of the rest of our defense program, was to, to try to, you know, not it sort of um, escalate the Central European animosities by, by putting that in, which is what that missile defense system would have done with Russia. So, you know, it's really kind of grand strategy uh, related and so I just think and it, I agree I don't know, with I Mike in this it. instance. In the grand scheme of things, it means bubkus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's know, last week's news. It's not only is in it this last week's, week's polls. It, it, in terms of the understanding. Patty understand it, understands it very well, but the fact is that most people who are going to be voting in this election really don't give a twit. <laughs> and <laughs> about Mitch. Well, let's let's. But I, just, I just I, I just want to make this point because I think Cesar kind of hit something that's important is that we've seen not just on the foreign basis these gaffes, but on the domestic basis is that there's a th- this is the thing the big question mark about Governor Romney is that he continues to be ha- have a tin ear about people. And whether it's here domestically or it's on foreign ground, he just doesn't think about how what he says affects people. When you, when you talk about, you know, I like firing people or whatever it is, the fact remains that you're not listening to what you're saying. You're saying things that just come out of your mouth and you say these things and whether it's culture in Israel that causes their economic success or I like firing people in the United States, it's the same problem. It's this idea of not being able to communicate on a basic level with people. And that's, that's the doubt that most people have about Romney. Well, then what's maybe uh, more worrisome, um, um, if I may, Congresswoman, is that he does know what he's saying and he still chooses to say it. Either way, he may not know what he's saying and know how he comes off, or he does know what he's saying and he still chooses to say things like, like I like firing people and talk All about right, culture. Those well, are the two things. Let me, let me, say, let me, let me, let me make one more quote. Let's use the whole quote. Okay, let's use the whole quote. Can we get Cesar yeah, and then just, you can right, finish we, off with that? Yeah. And I have been biting my tongue. By the way, I'm <laughs> that tongue must be pretty raw by now. I got 51 first cousins. This usually doesn't happen. I jump in. But so Mitt Romney, Governor Romney, just again, this insensitivity theme. He's referring to Russia as the Soviet Union. Yes. Is. Is. Think about. Did he say that? Oh, oh many yes. Times. yes. Now many think times. about that mindset. Yes. Where is he that he's thinking? Right. Oh, it's the Soviet Union. Exactly. All right. I and think, then, I and think then the mind. I think the mindset is that it's very clear that Putin is trying to take them back to the day of the Soviet Union. That's, that's Russia's not, policy that's right huge, now. That's, that's a huge big difference. Leap. No, that's uh, but, but that's where Putin is taking them. I mean, it's but been very you, clear for years. But you actually years. think that's what Mitt Romney's mindset is? Do you actually believe that versus he just has not, either doesn't he follow, just doesn't know. Doesn't, doesn't know, know. This is a man who put his dog on the roof of his car. Come on. <laughs> right, come on. And I'm right, let's Mike, we were going <laughs> to make a point a minute ago. Uh, yeah, I, now I'm lost as to where I was. Let's just... Uh, <laughs> well, let me say one more no. thing about the trip. The, the, oh, the, the hilarious thing about this trip is that this was supposed to be a safe trip. It was supposed to be a trip where, where he would meet with three friendly nations and have no issues. It was supposed to be a trip that elevated him in being a statesman and let the world see that he would be such a good president and, and, and the person who would lead the free world. That's what the trip was supposed to be. He was going, he called it a listening tour. I wonder where you got that from. He called it <laughs> he called it a listening tour. So the the fact that he went from saying this is a listening tour, this is going to be a completely safe trip, to to coming to the point where he refused to talk to the media, where he had major gas, not minor gas, but gas everywhere he went, and where his press secretary ended up cursing the media at at, at the holy place in Poland. You know, at some point you got to scratch your head and go, what's, what's he thinking? Well, I'll tell you what he's thinking. Tell me, please. I, I, well, I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what he's thinking. He's thinking, 
yay, last night if you watched all the news shows, nothing about this, everybody was talking about the fact that unemployment went from 8.2 to 8.3%. They were also talking about the fact that the, that the economy created 172,000 jobs. Not anywhere near enough. Not even not anywhere near enough. Not, not, not anywhere near enough. enough. We agree, not but even certainly more than was being created during the previous administration, which is where he wants to go back to. So, I mean, you know, let's, by comparison, Ronald let, let, well, Reagan was creating 350,000 He wants to take us back to the place where we're actually losing jobs. So we're gaining jobs, not nearly enough is true, no. but not what we were doing before. Phyllis, so let's have this Phyllis, conversation, okay. Mike. I'm eight, happy to have this eight, conversation. Eight, hey guys, we're going to take jobs. a break, and that's going to be the beginning of our next half. Is The thing that's really in front of us is the economic situation and the political implications of that. So we'll, we'll restart that fire when we get back in just a minute. Um, so we'll uh, be back in the second half of The Road to uh, Northern Virginia Politics. During the tragic events of September 11th, there have been hundreds of violent attacks against innocent Americans. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. Remember, please stop the hate. We're stronger when we are united. Remember. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. For all. In America, there's either room for everyone, or it's not America. Don't pick the wrong fight. Let's keep America land of the free. Stop the hate. You'd never know it on the battlefield, but nearly half of today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. This is Mommy's bed. Me and Jenny were jumping on it. Mommy's gun fell on the floor. I was a cowboy. Bang, 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 bang. I said, Jenny, wake up, wake up. It's just pretend. But she wouldn't wake up. I'm sick of dealing with you. I'm sick of dealing I work six with days a week. Who do you think you Stand are? Straight. Don't you ever talk back to me again. Uh, you just shut up. What are you crying about? What? What a child learns about violence, a child learns for life. Teach carefully. We can show you how. Act against violence. Call 877-ACT-WISE for a free brochure. Sweetheart, smoke outside now. You promise. Okay, hon. Sweetheart, smoke outside now. You promise. What kind of man are you? I'm a father. Look here, my father was a father, and he smoked his brains out in the house. Watch as he blows those smoke rings on my little red face. You probably have asthma. Asthma? Asthma. I'm telling you, nothing's going to happen to your kids. Swear. Don't swear when you're lying. You know very well that thousands of kids get bronchitis, ear infections, and even pneumonia from their parents' cigarette smoke. And didn't you promise your little angels you'd smoke outside? Hey, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Those little devils are just so sweet. <laughs> Do the right thing. Smoke Until you can stop, go out for your kids. Take the pledge. Call 1 800 513 1157. As time flows on, there are places we return to again and again. Precious places. Timeless places. Places that, with your help, can endure forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places around the world. We're back uh, for the second half of The Road 2, and we're going to get back to this discussion about um, the economy and tie it to the recent visit of the president to Loudoun County, the, the county seat in Leesburg, Virginia, which just happened two days ago. Um, and some of us were here, there. Um, 
So I want to start off with Cesar. Um, just kind of give us a sense of um, the, the message, the core message versus um, Governor Romney's core message. And, and how do you think that's going to play out? If he has a core message. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying Michael to figure that us. out. Well, I'll leave it to Mike. <laughs> Actually, um, from, from my perspective, my committee's perspective, I think we're more about the we as opposed to the me. I mean, we really think in order to come out of this, make the thing a little bit better for everyone, we do it together. And it's got to be a balanced approach. And I think if you listen to the president, if you listen to our candidates, that's how we're approaching solving our problems, not putting something forward that only half the country or half the population is going to agree to. I think that's the difference between the campaigns and the candidates this year. Mm -hmm. For us, it's really about us. How do we do this collectively? Phyllis, I know you were there. Um, what was your the central thesis that you took away? Oh, I agree with that. I agree that 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 he he didn't just. It wasn't just the thesis. He actually said that we grow the economy from the middle class out versus from the top down. We tried top down before, and, and that didn't work. I think the the one thing um, in this election is that um, Governor Romney has is running on his his um, Bain um, time at Bain and the fact that he is somebody who can create jobs. When in fact, um, if we go back to when he was governor of Massachusetts, he did not create jobs. But the bigger thing is, and I've heard a lot of Republicans say this, that he has not actually spelled out what his plan would be. And maybe he's waiting for the convention to spell that out because he just doesn't want to do that quite yet. Um, um, he had a plan that was evaluated by that independent um, group, and I can't remember. The tax policy. Oh, that, the, the, that independent group run by Obama's jobs. former staffer? <laughs> no, no, no. Romney. No, the, the one that the independent the group Romney run by Obama's former staff. The, the, this is great, because the Romney campaign referenced studies yeah. by that same group when they were going up against right. Governor Perry. they don't Perry. like it now. But they don't like right. it now because um, it's just... So, but, yeah. but I'm well, trying to get to the heart of that. I think it's important to show what, what that group came up with in, in the small plan that Romney put forward, and that is that that the top one percent would indeed get money back on their taxes, because but it of would the be deduction, but, the but it would be paid for by the bottom ninety-eight percent whose we're not taxes lowering would the debt. increase. Right, we're not lowering now, the Now the deficit. interesting thing, and Cesar is correct, is that they've cited this same group when they like the results. Right. But now they're saying that the group is wrong. Liberal. They're liberal. And I'm yeah. shocked, shocked to hear that people would selectively take this information and present okay. it in the campaign. But okay. the, fact, the fact remains is that, you know, it's like that old country western song, who are you going to believe, me or your lion oh, eyes? Nice. The fact is that we know that the same policies, we lived through them through Bush, and we know, yeah. everybody knew that it would take a decade to dig ourselves out of that trench. And they're surprised that it's going to take a decade to dig ourselves out of that <laughs> trench. Well, I don't think the and, president knew that since he promised immediate results. He did uh, not. He did. He did not. I think he, he assumed some, he, some backing he, from the Congress. He, he, I think he, that was he, part he, of the he, he, And the fact he is that we, when you've got Mitch McConnell, the minority leader of the, of the U.S. Senate, saying my sole job in the Senate is to deny President Obama another term. term. Yeah. That's where the problem lies. It's right. not President Obama. It's a fact that we've got a do-nothing Congress who has made it their objective in life to put barriers in the way of progress of this president. And we know that. Well, let's the voting give Mike, public knows Let's give that. Mike a chance to kind of, how do you, do you distinguish between the economic policies of the Bush administration and what Governor Romney is proposing? I think that's sort of the, the confusing missing piece because those policies definitely were not healthy for us. Well, and look, first of all, um, I'll be the first one to say that he has not articulated his plan uh, as well as he should. In fact, not only is it not short, it's too long and it's too complicated. He has a 67-point plan. Now, a 67-point plan is not something you can explain uh, to anybody in an easy to understand, you know, okay, yeah, I get it, that's what I need to do. They need to work on that. And I believe that they're probably going to do that at the convention, although I'm not sitting in the inner circle up in Boston, so I, I don't know that for a fact. 
uh, but they do, they do need to simplify it. But how do you I see think, them separating well, themselves from that? Because that what, is core to what the, the president's message I, I is. Think, it's the I, same I, stuff. I think the difference between the president and Governor Romney's plan is the president, well, the president has been, the polls tell us the president has been the most divisive president in the history of the country. No. So, no, no. So Not the House of Representatives. I'm not even going to go there. He is divisive. <laughs> I think, He's divisive you know, for some the, people uh, that aren't comfortable the, um, with him. The, uh, uh, oh, no, I don't think anybody's uncomfortable with the president the, at all. The I issue think with people most are Democrats with who, who actually yeah. have actually yeah. thought he's uh, actually I think been people are uncomfortable with the economy that he was left with. Right. Anyway, I think, go ahead. Well, it's his economy <laughs> now. You know, I, re I remember the, uh, the interview he sat down. I think it was ABC. It might have been somebody else where he sat there and he said, you know, if I can't get this job done in three years, then I don't deserve another term. Well, it's been four What's years. What's the job, though? The job, is, the, the, job. the job is putting Americans back to work. We've we're had 29 months, straight months of job, of job growth. growth. We, have eight, we were having... Point, hang on a second, fellas. We have 8.3% unemployment going up from 8.1 a couple months ago to 8.2 to 8.3. And why is the that? Mike, why, rate, why, why, no, Mike, Mike, why, 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 the why, why did the rate, unemployment rate go up when the job numbers were better than expected, over double what was expected? Say why, Mike. The U6 uh, otherwise, rate, uh, otherwise you're being as disingenuous, well, as Mitt Romney. The, so, the, U, <laughs> the U6 rate is 15%. This means that there are more than 15 million Americans out there who can't find jobs, who want to work, who are underemployed and want better jobs, or who have just become so discouraged in Barack Obama's economy that they've but, just. But Mike, you have to take into account that the me. jobs These are the people that Mitt Romney is going to care about. Go These ahead. are the people that Mitt Romney is going to create private sector investment in the economy so that we can. Like he did in Massachusetts. But the growth so, so in unemployment grow. has come from the public sector. It's state governments, yeah. it's local governments, it's a federal government cutting their own people. Yeah. It's not public I don't, sector. And that's I, what I don't, the Tea Party's I don't, been I don't think we've had a net decrease in public sector in, uh, oh, in, yes, in, in, no, in, no. in federal government employment. Not in federal government employment. Yes. Um, the other, the, another difference between the president and, and Romney is the uh, defense sequestration, which is going to hit Virginia very, very hard. The president wants that sequestration to take place. He refuses oh to God. cooperate. Oh, that's oh, come so Mike. Secretary of Defense just testified yesterday right. that it's yeah. going to be devastating. And, and, they do and, not want and, it at all. And the all. president will not talk with anybody in terms of finding a way around it. That's the problem. Mitt Romney has already said they had a grand bargain. Yeah, we got, that's table. how we got here. In the, exactly. They had a grand bargain to get around it. Right. And and Boehner, I almost said what I call him, but Boehner said. <laughs> I don't even want to know it. <laughs> after the break. <laughs> after the break. We'll tweet that. He couldn't deliver. He couldn't deliver among his own members. And it's not the president who has a problem, Mike. It's the Republican Party. They've got the Tea Partiers who'd rather see us all go down in flames Absolutely. in sequestration. Yeah. Absolutely. And the, and the and the gray beards in the Republican Party who say, wait, you know, the, the McCain's and the others saying, We can't we can't do this. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot. But it was the Republicans who put sequestration in effect. Absolutely. Right. Saying that's, we will that's accept CBO. Absolutely. C CBO, Congressional Budget Office. Office, let's not be jargon. Congressional Budget Office has said that if you if you have Obama's millionaire tax and let sequestration take place, that you're going to take four percent annual growth out of the economy by doing that. But, Mike, but those are two distinct. No, 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 if you have the tax, percent. you don't have sequestration. That's the deal. Right. No. <laughs> That's no. the trigger. Right. So what we're going to have is we'll keep the taxes the way they are. You know, why not maintain current tax rates? Two years ago, when the president maintained current tax rates, he said, "I'm sorry." He, he two said, years he said, ago, two years ago, when the president Amazing. maintained the current tax when, rates, when he went to the Republicans said, and bargained, what, right? What, what when he, he said, went to the Republicans and bargained to remain to maintain the current tax rate, then you, of course, just said he was so divisive. Yes. Two years ago, he went to the Republicans, reached out his hand, and made the bargain to maintain the current tax rate. Did he not? Uh, I believe he was and right. 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 Oh, right. But, but, but let's let's said, set the record. But, but, let's go but back. Let's go was, back and what let's he said talk was about the, the original record too weak that the to Bush take that tax money cuts. out of the economy. And the, the economy is weaker today than the, it was two the years ago. I don't tax think that's cuts what he said. Were designed Bush, to expire. The, bingo. Were the Bush to tax expire. cuts were never meant to be a permanent solution to they anything. They were designed to expire. And now what, what people on the other side are saying, oh, you're going to raise my taxes. Yeah. No, they'll go back to what, what they, they were. Under. Okay. And that's a then, semantic they, battle. They were designed to expire. Scissor, 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 let me ask you this. If, if allowing the current tax rates to expire and go up 
is not a tax the increase. That's just allowing for the it to top happen. 2%. President's if if, if, proposal if that's just, is for the top two percent. All right. If allowing so the current, like us. if allowing okay. the current tax rates to expire so that taxes will go up is not a tax increase, even though they've been in place for twelve years now. Why is it that the president says it's a tax increase when we allow a one-year reduction in Social Security taxes to expire, but that's a tax increase? That's not, that's not just allowing it to expire. Really? You're comparing I'm, a tax... I'm comparing your rhetoric and the president's <laughs> rhetoric is what I'm no, doing. No, no, no. What you're saying is Social Security is the same as a tax increase on the upper 2%. I'm saying... Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that if you say that allowing... So I'll, I'll tell my mom... If you say allow... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just yeah, want to make tell sure... Your mom. I just want to tell, tell my mom. Tell, tell, tell your mom yeah. that by continually reducing the Social Security tax rates, we're forcing the Social Security Trust Fund to go broke that much sooner. That's what your mother should but know. But Mike, no, no. Were, were the best tax cuts put in place to expire or not? Were, 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 no, were, look, were they, it was a, it was were, a political deal, Phyllis. It was a political gimmick, it right? Supposed, by the, it, was by, by, it was a political gimmick by the Republican That's Party. Right. And That's now right. that they want to be called on it, they want to call it a tax increase. Right. That's what it was. That's they right. were designed to expire, except, wink, wink, no, they really As were not. As was the Social Security uh, oh my, payroll tax. Be, right. I, guess, I think <laughs> we're going to do the it point was, of... It was a one-year reduction that after the single year, the president say, hell, the Republicans want to raise your Social Security taxes after one year. Mike. The the the, uh, the current tax rates have been there for twelve you're, years. You're smarter Mike. than this. Mike. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna, than gonna, than we're gonna move on I'm now because I think we're like getting so into the the semantic comment, things that one last comment. Eight point three percent unemployment. What, no, one last comment. 29, 29, 29 straight, straight months, months of jobs job growth, growth. one hundred seventy-two thousand jobs. Not let's enough. make that comment. All right, not so enough. let's not let's enough. move enough. on because we got we um, another major issue. Better than we were. We have another major issue since the Supreme Court um, declared the Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, constitutional. We still have some another um, Obama states that are saying that. Um, they're not going to accept it, and and I don't know all the details, so I'm going to hand this issue over to Leslie. To Our experienced speak legislator. To <laughs> <laughs> well, under under the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, states have the opportunity to set up exchanges, which are basically buying pools of insurance. And if the state does not set up a buying pool of insurance companies within that state, that the federal government will set one up for them. Our governor, in his wisdom, has in his uh, uh, wisdom to say he doesn't like uh, the federal government that much has handed over our health care to the federal government. He says Virginia won't pet put an exchange together so we'll just let the federal government do it for right. us. Now this goes Ironic. into a, a, a long line of, of health care decisions that Virginia has made that are that are questionable over the last three years. Uh, but this, this one is, is very puzzling because it's basically throwing their hands up and saying, we know what's best for our people, but we're going to turn our backs on them and let the federal government decide who is going to be in our exchange for insurance. Is there some other political dynamic going on there? I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's called little, an election. I'm a little suspicious. Of <laughs> but it's McDonald's, called an election. McDonald's not That's up for suspicious. election. McDonald's not up for election. He He's can't still even trying run to be again. on that VP he ticket. Can't I, even think, run uh, again. I, I, I think. <laughs> Which makes you wonder why he's running commercials, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think Republicans in Virginia are cautiously confident that Mitt Romney will be the next president of the United States, and that the Affordable Care Act, if it's anything but. Uh, will be repealed and why go through the whole process for nothing? Mike, why do you say it's anything but when the analysis is the objective Congressional Budget Office Thank analysis you, the, the, is in yeah, 10 yeah, years that's going to yeah. save money? You why actually do you quote it a little I, while ago? Right. Well, you use it when it, to exactly. your advantage. You I'm shocked that shock I would use yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. Come on. Intellectual <laughs> honesty. Come on. Come in on. politics? <laughs> yes. No, in this panel right here. So you I, know, the, the interesting ahead. thing to me, though, is that we have uh, people who are now getting who are now getting checks from their insurance companies. When has that happened before? Under the Affordable Health Care Act, if your health insurance company overcharges you on administrative costs, you get money back. I know business owners who are now getting checks back from their insurance companies. Right, and that'll last for what, a year. And this is what, it, how do you know it's a year? How do you know they won't repeat themselves and do it next year, too? Or well, the year after that? Well, if they don't, they're that? spending more money on the they're, actual health. If they're health. spending <laughs> more money on, on administrative costs, 
then you get the money back. Now, is that a bad thing? Is that a tax increase? Come I also on, have a, Mike. I, I, I can speak the, the, from the tax from, increase. From, from, I can I can speak personally. I have a I have a son who's leaving for college on Wednesday, which is another whole issue. Um, <laughs> you may cry. Um, <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> How dare he? Um, we're going to save fourteen hundred dollars in insurance costs because he can remain on our insurance right now. Fourteen hundred dollars for our family. He could remain on your policy anyway. There was, you know, he can remain uh, on policy uh, now until he's twenty-six uh, years old. Right, but he could remain on it till he was twenty-two before. So, you know, we're and then not, at twenty-two, uh, what happens to him? Or a full-time student? Or a full-time yeah, student? Yeah, full And then what happens so, to him then? Well, he's got uh, what, a job. Uh, what about and he the ones that a, don't want to go to school? He gets a good job and has good benefits. What about the kids who are not quite ready to go to school full-time? What happens to those kids? They get a job and they and they get benefits. See, I, I think this and is And they still, pay for them, and that's why that's why the parents just save fourteen hundred dollars. It's just a symptom. I think the real issue is, do we as a country, as a culture, do we want a for-profit health care delivery system? I think to me that is the big fundamental issue. Do we want to have that type of system? We've had it. Witness the results. Yeah. Well, we have a health care system in the world. But, uh, but it's not accessible the to the poor. For some. It's not, if you it are poor, it, 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 if you are poor, not, it's if not you are poor, you get, you get it's, Medicaid. It's, it's, we it's have reactive, we it's have reactive care, the it's not proactive. Where people are sitting in emergency rooms right. and dying, right. literally while they sit in emergency because rooms. Because they haven't been able to afford a yearly checkup. If there was anything that I would have faulted. There's not preventative care. If there was anything that I would have faulted, the Obama administration on is not pushing harder for Medicare for all. Yeah. And that didn't happen. We do have a for-profit mm -hmm. uh, health care system. Which is a good we thing. Saved, we saved we insurance companies. In the country insurance companies money. are going to do very well under this program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to do it because at they've been bought off in the legislation. No, because they're going to have more people to cover. Right. And they instead were of off. you and I having higher premiums, to, to pay for uninsured people, they're going to insure them up front. Mm -hmm. Now that's a better system, to insure people up front rather than under the, the radar, right. under our, that's why you have $10 aspirins in the hospital, yeah. is that they're charging you for the people who don't have insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. Now everybody, almost everybody, is going to have insurance, and it's going to make our bills on the whole lower. And it's going and to you reduce know the it, quality of care, it. it's going to reduce That's the not true, well, it's just it? speculation. And it's Mike, going to, Mike yeah. walk oh. into any yeah. emergency room in, right. a, in an inner city neighborhood on any Friday or Saturday night and ask them what their quality of care, of, of care has been. Mm. When they sit there for hours because their child has the flu or a cold and they had no health insurance to go have their child see a doctor, ask them about their quality of care. I can say that I am very, very blessed as is my family. I have good health care. I have a good job. I can afford it. But that does not mean it's a good health care system for all of us. It is not a good health care system for all of us, Mike. And the fact that you would think that means you may be just as out of touch When did I say it was good Romney. for everybody? When did you I said say we that? have the best care system well, in, the, in the world. <laughs> not, for not for everybody. Not for everybody. If you can afford it, you have a good health care system. I love this compassionate concern. We, we only have thinking. about eight minutes left, and we kind of need to transition this conversation to politics since this is a show about politics. So um, I'm going to let. This hasn't been, huh? <laughs> what have we been talking about? I'm just about? way too issue oriented here. Gotcha. So I want to get to sort of some of the mechanics, and we can kind of expand it to the, the candidates themselves. But Cesar is the the uh, chair of the Fairfax County County Democratic Committee. That's right. Um, how are you guys uh, doing with the mechanics of politics right now? So for for our committee, the focus uh, I'll just three things: voter registration voter registration and voter registration in the areas where we think there's a big need. Um, educating them, chasing them down, and then getting them to the polls. That's <laughs> how we're going to basically get our folks uh, elected. Uh, not just President Obama, Governor Kane, uh, but our congressional candidates, Moran, Conley, and uh, Cabral. Okay. Um, Mike, do you want to comment on how you're, I'm sure you're hard at work for the, the Romney well, campaign, but... Um. You know, uh, to relate it to what Cesar just said about Fairfax, um, you know, we understand uh, the importance of this area. Uh, we have not one, which has been our, uh, our past uh, practice for the last 40 years. You one. mean in Arlington County? No, 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 no. I'm talking about Fairfax. We have not one victory center, but we've opened three victory centers in Fairfax oh, okay. County. 
oh. uh, recognizing the importance of that. They are... Uh, Victory Center, huh? Victory Centers, that's what we call them. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, every, every election night you have a victory party, whether you victory or not. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't uh, heard but, that term but, before. But, but we're, taking, <laughs> we're, we're taking them very seriously. And with three victory centers going, one in McLean, one in Springfield, one in Fairfax City, uh, they are going uh, literally uh, 14 hours a day. Uh, you, it's difficult to get a chair uh, there. We're having uh, people come in to uh, attract the crowd, which is a good thing. Uh, Susan Allen is down at the Springfield Victory Center today. and. Uh, people are very uh, happy about that. Uh, the number of phone calls that we've made so far uh, is it, it puts us on on track to make about 175 percent of the phone calls that have ever been made in Northern Virginia, uh, and we're thrilled about that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be our job to rain on those parades. And uh, I keep, I I keep getting centers. all this wonderful mail from Mitt Romney. I As do I. And I keep getting all this mail from Barack Obama. I don't get it. And he calls me a great American. <laughs> He's right. He sends me autograph pictures. I got that picture. I got too. posters. I did. I they got a lot of money in that campaign. I can only they're ask not you, but where not are targeted, they getting well. these lists? Not, yeah. I, I, these exactly. lists are pathetic. You know, I, exactly. I, don't, I don't get it. I have gotten no less than six pieces of mail from President <laughs> Obama yet. It's not like I'm not known who I well, am. Yeah. I think both sides I, are just know, carpet bombing. North yeah, North yeah. North I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting because, you know, four years ago, I don't think most people expected President Obama to carry Virginia. No, they oh, and I don't think, and and I don't think there's any question that he's going to carry it again. Absolutely. Oh, I'll take that back. And oh, I'll oh, tell no. you the the interesting <laughs> thing to me is that I th he's going to carry Fairfax right. County. Absolutely. He's going to carry Arlington Absolutely. and Alexandria and Falls Church, and I think the I'll linchpin Arlington, and, Falls and Church. the linchpin uh, in all gotta, of this is going to be Fairfax. Loudoun County. County. And the president and Loudoun said County, that himself. And, I, and we actually you know, have three victory centers in Loudoun County, too, which is really amazing since we're much, you know, we're, we're, we're You call them victory centers, too? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ours are blue, though. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. The margin of victory, Virginia, is going to come out of Loudoun. I agree with that. That's my I prediction. That. I'll take that. And there are some All right, so we got two. You guys aren't going to win Fairfax no, County. No, I didn't win <laughs> Fairfax County. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, as far as the the congressional candidates and um, and how they will or will not, and and I, including uh, Senate uh, Tim Kaine, how does that support or not support the president? Are, are we thinking that that's really going to cause some some more additional synergy or? I mean, Tim Kaine's very popular. Tim Kaine's numbers actually have polled higher in Virginia than the president's number have polled. Right. Have and polled. he's carried Loudon before. And he's carried Loudon before. <laughs> it's kind of like Mike Warner in, in, um, in 2008. Mike Warner actually um, carried more people than, than uh, President Obama did. So, um, and, and we have the added benefit of Tim Kaine's opponent being George Allen. Yeah. So well, let's tie this to <laughs> something <laughs> Leslie's really um, taken, taken the lead for. And that is the issue of women's issues um, in well, Virginia and as it relates to the state government. We, we came out of a General Assembly ses uh, session this last year that made Virginia the laughing stock of the nation. Absolutely. When you're on Saturday Night Live and Rachel Maddow because your governor and your General Assembly want to do state-sponsored rape on uh, ab abortion. Uh, it makes it a difficult thing. What do you to mean hold. by that? Be, well, be what clear. They, they had they <laughs> had a bill, and and it introduced said that you had to have what's called a transvaginal ultrasound in order to obtain an abortion, and that is basically state sponsored rape. Uh, under under rape laws, it's state sponsored because it's rape. involuntary. It's involuntary, mm -hmm. and it's. Uh, so I legally, won't go into, legally, le legally, would, oh. legally. I thought they're so for then, less government, by the way. <laughs> yeah, in, unless it goes someplace else, right. but yeah. I won't go there. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we had an outcry. They said, no, we're going to have, we won't have the transvaginal. We'll have an ultrasound, which doesn't do any good, but it, just in case, you'll pay for it, not the state. And then we had another bill called the personhood bill, which was finally uh, taken off the calendar. But that would have basically out. Uh, outlawed a number of uh, birth control measures. So a uh, number of legislators 
uh, Chris Ab Amundsen, myself, Margie Vander High, Robin Abbott, uh, from all across Virginia, were talking on the phone saying, what, what's going on, you know? And we decided to start a PAC. And we decided to start a PAC to raise money for those people who want to run against these people who, ran, who voted for these bills. Now, 80, 86% of the people who voted for this legislation ran unopposed in the last election. 86 percent. That shows you how how redistricting has done exactly. a number on a lot of exactly. uh, our opportunities. So we're out recruiting. We have now raised over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in about three months. We hope to raise a half a million dollars before the first of the year, and we're encouraging both women and men, Republicans and Democrats, if they're willing to stand up for women's reproductive health. We're willing to help them get elected. And so we're not, we're not putting anything around who we're going to support. Uh, of course, trying to find a pro-choice Republican is kind of like trying to find a unicorn. But we're, we're, we're going to look for them. We're going to look for them and see if we can't help them get elected. You know, we need I, to wrap up, guys. So just 10 seconds each. I was actually going to say uh, real quickly that I was, you know, if I've, I've heard some um, pro-life Republican women who have opposed things like the transvaginal ultrasound. This has been an affront to women really across the board, no matter what your position on abortion. Women have felt that that was just one, a step too far. Yeah. A step too far. We're going to have to wrap up, guys. Sorry. And I don't think we have, other than goodbye, we don't have much time. <laughs> <Goodbye. laughs> the women just gave their, <laughs> their position. The and uh, thank you for joining us again for another edition of The Road 2. And we'll see you next month. Thank you.